<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Turn around, look at somebody, really, Robert said, it's, it's really good to see you today. Come on, he said, it's really good to see you today. Wow. Dickie, so good to see you. Everybody, remember Dickie? Okay, I'm sure. Come on. Let's welcome him back. Yeah, and, and next week, we're going to have a Mr., new Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, Sean and Rajit's wedding. Yeah, next week, okay? Ah, yeah, a bit more noise, lah. The real test begins now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. So, the prayer shield thing is something that we have thought through in NECF for years. Uh, it's something that has been going on for, my goodness, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years, uh, where we actually uh, just encourage congregations to pray for their leaders. Uh, and uh, we actually put out videos. So, I think this video will be, is supposed to be posted. Uh, it's an introduction by the sec gen, and uh, then following weeks, we have uh, those of us in the executive council giving a short devotion on the armor of God, and then how you can pray. All right, so let's uh, go ahead. It's 91 days to, to 2023. Where did the year go? Think about it. So I, I want you to just think of something with me before we read Psalms 37. Uh, we, we, we are here, uh, what's the date today? 2nd of October. Is it 2nd of October? 2nd of October, maybe we're looking down Christmas, or we're looking down uh, 31st December, or we're looking down towards uh, 2023. In between, you know, whatever it may be. But we all have hopes and aspirations, whether it be for our own lives, our spouses, our families, uh, you know, our community, our workplace, our study. We, we all have different aspirations and hopes. Now, I would like us to, as we look at Psalms 37, just the first seven verses, I actually have only put one verse up here. So I'm going to ask you to turn with me. If you have a physical Bible of your handphone, turn to Psalms 37. Because I'm convinced, well, the Bible is a convincing book, that as we look at the six simple but yet important principles, it's not just to finish the year well, it's not just to do 2023 well, but I think if we apply this in our lives every day, we live a different life. Amen? We will live a different life. Uh, a life not that it's separate from others, a life that is connected to God, yeah? So, let's read. I'm going to read verses 1, and then verse 7 we'll read together, okay? Verse 1 uh, to, to 6 verse. And you will see this coming out in the, maybe the six different thoughts that I have today. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about, help heaping up wealth without knowing whose it will finally be. Are we ready to read it together? Ready, church? Let's read this together. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. But now, Lord, what do I look for? Uh, the, the other word in a different translation would be, what do I wait for? What am I 
what are you waiting for? You know, the word wait speaks of the word of the understanding expectations. Do we have expectations? Did you expect something this morning when you woke up? That your husband prepared coffee for you, your wife prepared breakfast for you? You, you expected maybe something. I don't know what you expected. Maybe you, expe maybe you have an expectation this morning when you come. You wanted to really encounter the presence of God. And God, speak to my heart, Lord, stir my heart. Maybe at the prayer time, there was an expectation to really engage with different ones and to pray. Tomorrow, you have expectations at work, at school. We have different expectations of church, of family, of friends, of workplaces, of bosses, of those who work for us. We have expectations of those who teach. We have expectations of God. Don't you think so? We do, isn't it? We may not say it. But many a times we have these expectations, isn't it? So we all have expectations, expectations of others. So he says, but now, Lord, what do I look for? You know, I just, in a few moments ago, I said, hey, we're standing here today. We're looking down the road, 31st December, 23. We have some form of expectation, something that we are hoping for. But how does he end? He says, where is his expectation? Come, let's, let's read the last sentence. But my hope is in, it's in God. So there's so many things that we can hope for. But it says hope should rest in God. But we as humans, we have expectations of others to do something for us, isn't it? Is that not true? We do that. So the psalmist goes through all these things and he says, but my hope. My expectation, you know, I'm going to wait for this one thing. Whatever it is, God, I know I can find it in you. Whatever it may be, I know I can find it in you. Whatever I'm going through, I know you will take me through. Are you with me? It's very important. So, so in the position that you are in right now, whether emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, whatever it is, Maybe there's an expectation for health and healing or reconciliation or clarity in your mind. Or maybe there's a hope for some breakthrough, some financial release, some miracle that you are desiring. Whatever it may be, where should my hope be? In God. That's where it is, isn't it? So we're going to look at another scripture in the New Testament in Ephesians. Is Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I've made a decision. I've, I've said, Jesus, you are my savior. You are my God. Lord, I repent of my sin. I know I need you. I receive you. And God, my life is in you now. My hope is in you, Lord. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is everyone in Christ here? Okay. Okay. So we are believers. We put our hope in him. The new creation has come. That means something changes from the inside. Something changes on the inside. Light comes. Hope begins to burn in our hearts. Something changes. The old begins to go off, isn't it? And the, and, and the illustration given in, in scripture is, it says, you put off the old. It's like when you go home after a long, hard day at work in the farm. And you take off your sweaty, dirty clothes. You go and have a good shower and you put on clean clothes. The old has gone. And the new is where? Is here. Is here where? In you. So, where is my hope? In Christ. Where is he? In my life. Where am I? In him. Okay? So, when we think of finishing strong, not just 91 days, not just 365 days, but every day of our lives. What is the hope that we have? What is this thing about me being in Christ, this new creation? Something that God continuously does in my life, works in my life. He continuously changes me, makes me a better person. He continuously helps me through my valleys and helps me even in my mountaintop experiences. God is with me all the time. Why? My hope is in Him. Amen? My hope is in Him. 
So let's look at some of these thoughts today. So to those who are okay, many a times, you know, I'm talking about this. Let us also understand, we may not be feeling what the others feel who are going through a valley time. And that's where we need to be more sensitive, okay? So it all begins in Christ. It's all in Christ. It begins with him, it continues with him, and it ends with him. Amen? I'm, we just, I'm just taking the, the 91 days. It begins with God. It continues with God. It ends with God. Our life begins with God. It continues with God. It ends with God. Amen? Our life is in Him. Is that, what do I need to do to adjust that? Well, to begin, I want to give you a story that all of you, all of you know. You, you've probably, well, I'm assuming all of you know. Uh, is is the, of this very successful father and son. The wife had passed away of some sickness. And the father being an amazing entrepreneur, art collector, worked through the years and, and tutored the son into the fine ways of collecting art and all these different pieces of different things. And they had built this multi-billion dollar empire. And then comes war. And the son has to go because everybody is enlisted at that age and you have to go. Well, unfortunate for the father, the son is killed in war. So he withdraws because he has nothing left to live for. His money doesn't mean anything to him anymore. His property doesn't mean anything. His art collections, though they may be sold for millions and hundreds of millions, mean nothing to him. Because one, he has first lost his wife. Now he has lost his son. For him, he has lost everything. So he, the whole place is draped up. And one Christmas Eve, he hears this knock on the door. He actually became a recluse and he didn't want to respond. But a very persistent knocking over and over and over. And finally, he walks through. And he's walking through the space where he and his son had put up and decided where each painting would go and how it would be placed. And he's walking through and maybe un me memories are coming through. And he opens the door and this guy dressed in army uniform is there and says, sir, I, I'm sorry to bother you. He says, you don't know me. I'm so and so. I fought beside your son. He said, in fact, your son died saving my life. It's in my hands that he died. So the father, of course, is struggling, looking at him. He says, he, says, he spoke so much about you. He often talked about the art collection that you all have. And uh, said, I'm not much of an artist. In fact, I'm hardly an artist. He says, but I've sketched something simple on the way I remember your son the best. And he gives it to him. He comes in. They have pleasantries. They, they can't have a conversation. And uh, he bids him farewell, goes off. And the father takes that picture and he removes his most prized picture and places it in the center of the entire gallery. Shortly after that, he passes away. So, there is this big auction. No heir. Nobody to take over the property. So, there's this big auction, art auction, and everything is going to go and the money has been predetermined where it will go. So all this, all this art collectors from all over the world come down now because these prized great pieces of art are going to be on sale. And uh, when, when the moderator comes up, he says, uh, okay, he says, there is a clause in the will that we have to sell one art piece before the auction can begin. And when they show the art piece, you guess, it's the art piece that the friend had sketched. And everybody looked at each other and said, is this a joke? You call that art? That's... Kids can draw better than that. 
they all laughed about it and they said, <laughs> but the caretaker of the family of the son and the father was there. And while they waited, he sheepishly put up his hand and he says, uh, 20 bucks. He hits the hammer, sold. And then he hits the hammer and brings the auction to a close. And everybody is upset. They said, hey, excuse me, where's the auction? He says, no, there's another clause there. He says, him who gets the son gets everything. Sometimes we have this great treasure in Christ that we don't realize what we have through Jesus. And we are so busy with so many things, so many issues, that we fail to understand that in Him we are a new creation. And our hope is in Him. Can I at least hear an amen? We have this amazing treasure from God. His life, His love, His grace, His mercy, His salvation. As we think about that, as a piece we want to hold on to, my first thought is this. The first thing that we do is, when we want to look forward, we also look... Can I have the next slide, please? we got to look upward, isn't it? Look forward by... You, look, you sound so scared. It's not a trick question here. We, we look forward by looking up. So first, we need to have that connection with God, isn't it? Whether it's daily, whether it's the few minutes you want to read a devotion... Whatever it is, quiet your heart in the morning, quiet your heart during the week. It's so important to have that connection. Some, some of us, you know, have these withdrawals. If we don't have our coffee, we get upset, we get edgy. <laughs> you know, if we don't eat something, we get angry. Uh, so we need that fix and then we all calm. Can you imagine, can you imagine if we are all at, at salvation this new chip comes in and every time we don't connect with the word or in simple in our hearts to the Lord, we have this edgy feeling. Then we say God is a control freak, yeah? But think about it. Looking forward, if I want to look forward, I have to look upward first. Amen? In our world, which has so many things to offer, we often say, Plan your goals, work your goals, do this and do that. And... But for us, we know our treasure is in. So we look where first? We look upwards first. We look to God first. Daily, committing our year to the Lord, committing the next year to the Lord, committing our aspirations, our goals, our decisions to the Lord. And, and this is the danger. Many people say, oh, I prayed. No, you didn't pray. You just wanted to do it. You just wanted to do it. So we, we look forward by looking up. By that, number one, keep our connection with God strong. Two, keep our visions, our values, our core values, our principles. Keep them. Where do we get it? As we engage God's word daily. As we engage the word daily, as we hear different things being said on Sunday or the connect groups, we pick a point, we, we pick a principle and say, God, I want to apply this, I want to work on this this week. I want to work on this season, I want to work on this one thing. I want to get in shape spiritually. We all want to get in shape physically, right? Okay, at least it's me, all right. Yeah. So we all want to get in shape. I think one of the things maybe can I challenge all of us is, hey, let's get healthy spiritually. Amen? Let's do that. Let's get healthy that way, all right? So we keep looking ahead, and the best way to look ahead is to look. We look to God. We connect with Him. But the challenge is here. The challenge is this. We can get stuck in our past or our present. We need to break free of those things so that we can look up and that God gives us a clear perspective of the future. Amen? We live for mission. We live for vision. We say, God, help us. Help me, Lord, live well. Uh, Isaiah 43, uh, 18 to 19 says, Forget the former things. 
often we will take this scripture and we will say, forget your past, forget your pain, forget all the disappointments. But if you look at it in, in the, what was happening there, that's not what God is speaking about actually. He says, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Is there an I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Actually, what he was speaking to them was, he said, you've enjoyed good times. You've enjoyed some measure of success. But don't get stuck in good things. Our problem is we can get stuck even with good things in life. And we cannot see the God thing that he wants to bring in us. You with me? That's very important because I can, I can have it good. Man, I'm, I'm, I, my job is great. I've got the bonus. I, I've got, you know, uh, the promotion that I want. I've got the business deal. I've got the college that I wanted to get in. I've got the university. And we, nothing wrong with that. Good. But God has something better. So as we look forward, We've got to keep looking up so that he gives us a clear perspective of life, of where we are, what we are doing. Don't get stuck in the past, even with good things. Even with good things. Yeah. Next is use your voice correctly. Use your voice correctly. We can use our voice for all the wrong things, isn't it? Uh, you know, I want to read a bunch of scriptures and uh, then I want to make a few comments and move. I just realized the time. It says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Don't, don't move. Uh, I'm not asking you to go into politics, but God calls of us. Oh man, what does Lord require of you? Justice, mercy, and fear God, right? We all are called to be ones who express justice. It's not by going and burning flags. That's not God's idea. It's not making silly comments over the Facebook. No. It's to get our lives involved in relieving people, the poor, the needy. How am I engaged in another person's life? Sometimes in my little need, I cannot see another person's need. Then it's all about me. So, next one please. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience. You don't have to start an argument with everybody about your faith. But you can have a conversation. I was telling some of you, I was in Bali last week, so uh, I was a bit concerned. Uh, because it's the whole interfaith. And, you know, the, the, the whole group was, uh, the person next to me was actually a Muslim. And he runs a big organization in Indonesia and travels fairly around the world and whatever not. And when I looked at it and I said, I don't have to be silly, but how am I going to give a reason for what I believe in and why I believe God gives us the answer? And the whole faith when I was giving testimony of, when I wasn't giving testimony of my life, I was talking about what I believe in, how it's expressed through dignity. But I also spoke on the issues of justice. So I did the both and say, this is how we do it in KL. You know, in one sense, through New Covenant community, expressed in dignity, but this is how we do it. But you may not do it that way. But every day you have the opportunity to speak up of the goodness of God in your life. You don't have to be confrontational with people. 
that you can have a decent conversation with people. Sow seeds. Ask God, Lord, this one person is on my heart, Lord. Give me opportunities on how I can talk about your goodness. Amen? Speak up. I think this is where sometimes, no la, I won't talk about it. No, try. Take the first step. Try. At least take the first step. It's not comfortable. Not all of us can have that conversation, right? But take the first step. Try that. Be encouraged. Again, it says here, what? Uh, uh, go back one, one scripture, please. With gentleness, respect, keeping a clear conscience. Sometimes I find uh, Christians love arguments. Why, why are you going to arguments? You know, arguments are everywhere. No need to go into arguments. Have conversation. Ask God. And that's why when we look forward and we look up, then let God give us the clarity on how we can speak up. Amen? Give us, let God do it next year. So that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Let your good deeds speak for them. You be the salt and light. Amen? We be the salt and light. In how we work, and you will see how it pans out in the other four. Can I have the next one, please? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out from your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Are there a lot of people around you who have needs? You say, no, I've got needs. Yeah, okay. Do you have people around you who have needs? Why are you so sheepish? A bit bold. Lah. Anybody? You got people around you with needs? Wonderful. You can speak up in amazing ways into their life. It says, do not let any unwholesome. Sometimes, you, you know, I, I, I think some Christians are afraid because they join unsavory conversations with people. And then they cannot have the right conversation because they're going to feel hypocritical. That's the challenge, you know. But only what is what it says, only what is what is helpful. Now, doesn't it help? If you think about what I'm saying here, when I said to look forward, look up, when I'm looking up, am I not in, in shaping this? Am I not allowing God to shape my thinking and my speech? I'm asking him, Lord, shape me. I want to better represent you. God, I want to live a life that matters to you. That when people look, they see you. And that people will know what a great treasure you are. Amen? What a great treasure you are. You may live a simple life. You don't have, you don't have to have the extravagance. But people see your life and say, man, with the simple things this person has, man, they, they sure enjoy God, don't they? No, go back, sorry according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Next. Learn to do right. Seek justice. That's the word again. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. All of us have the opportunity to do that. Amen? Let's try again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, please. The tongue has the power of life. Do you believe that? You walk out in some conversations, some, it's like, oh, this person is so discouraging, isn't it? Or you walk out from different conversations, you feel, wow, that was good. Isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Come on, guys. I know it's a bit, no, no son, okay? The tongue has the power of life. And death. Those who love it will eat its fruit. I, I, you, you are smarter than me. You can figure that out, all right? So we do that. So where do you need your voice to be heard? Work wherever this place is. Let that good voice be heard, you know? Where do you need to speak up? Speak up the right things. Hey, crazy things are going on in school, wherever it is. Hey, say, I think those things oppress people or, you know, why, why is this happening here? Think about it, okay? 
Be a problem solver. Be a problem solver. Encourage good change by your voice. Inspire people by what you say. Inspire people to finish their year well, to live their life well, to say that there is a great treasure in Christ. Inspire them to say, you can look up so that you can look forward. All right? The next one is show up. Uh, not show off, huh? Show up. Okay, Psalms 20 verse 6 says this. Many claim to have un... Okay, can we go back to the verse? Psalms 20 verse 6. Oh, Proverbs, 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 not Psalms. Proverbs 20 verse 6, you're correct, you're correct. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. If you look at the word unfailing love, it actually describes loyalty. Loyalty. If I can put it in simple terms, can I be counted on? Can I count on you? Can you count on me? Do you have my back? If I got your back, will we take care of one another? Will we take care of others? What? Uh, you know, it sounds so simple, isn't it? Hey, unfailing love. What can be so challenging? Uh, we look for people to be counted on, isn't it? We always look, isn't it? Spouse, you always want your spouse to be able to be counted on. Uh, your kids, your parents, uh, at work, your colleagues, your business partner, your friends in school, college, uni, wherever it is, uh, in church. We are always looking on people that we can count on. Why? It encourages us. It builds us. It does something to our lives. So we all have that expectation, isn't it? God. But we put our hope in God. And can you just see this? If all of us do it, just imagine the atmosphere at home. Just imagine the atmosphere at work. Sometimes two large workplaces is a challenge, isn't it? But when you start doing it in small groups, when you do it in your connect group, when you do it in church, it inspires others. Would you not agree? It inspires others. It does something in our lives. It stirs us up. So when I say show up, so work. Sometimes people show up, but they don't show up, isn't it? They show up and then they disappear. You know? Uh, why? They are the, having tea breaks. They have six tea breaks a day, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> show up, show up. You know, you can show up to class. A teacher can show up to class, but still never show up, isn't it? So a colleague can show up. Somebody can show up to work, but never really show up. At home, you know, uh, you can show up as a dad, but you don't really show up as a dad, as a mom, as a son, as a daughter. But when we all show up, hey, something happens, isn't it? Something happens. So show up in church. Can you imagine? Hey, let's show up. Let's do it. Show up in relationships. Be there. Be physically, emotionally, mentally. Be present there. Do more than promise. That's what it said. Do more than... Who can claim to have unfailing love? But a faithful person who can find. You know, we, we have marketing, isn't it? We do everywhere is marketing. Some of you are involved in marketing. We all do all kinds of things. But marketing has these things. It's appearance, many a times, over performance, isn't it? Yeah, it's appearance over performance, isn't it? It's perception over reality. But we must give the real deal. Yeah, so let me go quickly. The fourth one. Connect with community. Connect with community. Uh, if, you, if you take the word unity, community, gather, together, if I'm not mistaken, it's a few hundred places, close to a thousand in the scripture, all over. If, if we, you want to have the time to do it, if you read it, but all of a sudden you have this new revelation of how God looks at us coming together. We see a glimpse of it in Acts 2, isn't it? Uh, 
we will read that a bit later. Let's read Matthew 18, 20 first. It says, for where two or three gather together, or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Do you think, we, do you think we've come to gather together today? We have. But we may just come to be in church, isn't it? But if we have the idea, I'm coming, and I'm really coming to be with my brothers and my sisters. I'm really coming to show up. I'm really coming to, to embrace, encourage, and I'm supposed to inspire others. When two or three gather in my name, the whole concept and thought is this. I mean, I can come and gather, but I may be in disagreement with him. That's not gathering together. That's just standing next to him. Lah. Ah, how are you doing? Hi. Well, we were together. No, we're not together. Right? So, so they can say, uh, yeah, you see the husband and wife? Oh, you can see the body language. Huh? Well, people got a lot of time. Busy bodies looking at other people's <laughs> body language. <laughs> there are big busy bodies looking at each other's body language. They're not together. They're just standing there next to each other. So when we come together, it's a whole different thing. Our heart, our mind, our spirit, as we look forward, we look upwards, and we look upwards, let him shape us. We see this treasure, the treasures that's in me, it's the same treasure that's in you. And when we come together, it's a treasure trove, man. Oh my goodness. And we see the richness of God demonstrated in all that we do. There I am with them. Why? It delights God, isn't it? Let's next one, please. This is where it says, every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. Every day. Oh, yo. One day, a week or so, I want to come like, <laughs> suffer for Jesus. No, you're coming for Jesus. Once a week. You want me to come every day. But if we think again historically, that group of people impacted empires. It wasn't some fierce oratory skill. It wasn't some, it was just something that they understood to do together. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. What did they do? They, not gardenia, okay? They what? They broke bread in their homes. They came together. Hey, today what are we going to do? Well, it's sort of, we won't break that. We'll take way further. Yeah. <laughs> And ate together, how? With what? Glad and sincere hearts. What is that doing here? It is actually saying when we come, we begin to deal even with our own hearts. Because I can be sitting here, I pick on your clothes, I can be breaking bread. But I may not be the most sincere in my friendship to you, you know. I, I, are you getting this, everyone? And that dynamic that God wants to bring is something so powerful. You know, we use, we use the word in war, the allegiance. Allegiance. No matter what another person does, the other person will say, die, die, I will stand with this fella. Uh, it's a Malaysian expression, okay? Die, die also I do, you know? Mati, mati, you know? No translation in the English language, okay? No, no, no translation. Why? Because there is something that happens with glad and sincere hearts, not mad, okay? The dynamic, what does it do? That means we allow God to constantly shape us. Why? Because there's an amazing treasure that He has for us. And when, and when the treasure in me can inspire you and the treasure in you can inspire me, can you imagine what dynamic takes place together? Can you? It's amazing. Next, please. Praising God and enjoying favor with all people. Praising God. Wow. It is said historically, 
because of the persecution that took place, all the Christians, first time we call Christians, in the morning they will all go to the catacombs where they buried the dead. Huh? And those days they built it underground. They will all go out early in the morning to pray, to worship, and hear somebody speak the word. They said in a distance you could hear the worship. And when they came back to, to their homes, to the villages, everybody knew the Christians had finished their prayer and now they were ready for their day. And did they get ready for their day? And the Lord added to their number daily to those who were being saved. Wow. Wow. Those principles, those simple principles take place in your connect groups, in our time together here, in different ministries. Next, please. How good and pleasant it is. Not just good, not just pleasant. It's good and pleasant. When what happens? Can you read that? When? This is not unity. This is just coming together. Unity is demonstrated when we do something with what we have heard from the scriptures. Because that's when the treasure, it's like you open the treasure chest and it's all glitter and glory. God demonstrate his love and his kindness and his grace and his mercy and all that he has. Wow. Why? Community is life-giving. It's fun. It attracts the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Let's, let's learn how to do that together. Very quickly, I want to finish the last two. I, I, I think I can just breeze through the next two. Don't give up. When you're tired, God doesn't give up on you. When you're discouraged, God doesn't give up on you. When you have failed, God doesn't give up on you. But many a times we give up on ourselves, we give up on others, and then we kind of break all the first four. We, we, we lose that, that place of, God says, don't give. You, you, you know, one of my favorite examples always is, is Nelson Mandela, yeah? You know, he was in the prison 27 years. 27 years. We for 27 hours cannot go through a problem. 27 years. He wasn't bitter. He wasn't angry. He had just one clear focus. The liberation of South Africa. That's it. So when we think of the future... If we don't look up, we will look forward in so many different ways, in so many different ideas. No, don't give up. Uh, just a few scriptures very quickly. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity. Sometimes problems are the best opportunities. Would you not agree? Problems are the best opportunities because the days are evil. We don't have to illustrate that. We don't have to go. We know what the days are. Next. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it. But one thing I do, just one very clear thing is this, I forget what is behind and I strain forward to what is ahead. I press toward the goal. I want you to see this here and you can connect it back to one. I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. So if I want to look forward, if I don't look upward, I may reach a destination, but it may not be the one God wants me for. It may not be the one. It may be the best cushion the best job, the best business deal, the best opportunity. But God says, hey, if you, if, you, if you look a bit more, I want to show you something beyond this. I've got something better for you. Yeah? 
finally brothers. Wow. This is amazing. Why should we give up? And what we can focus on. Whatever is, can you shout out each one? Whatever is true. How do we find what is true? We come back to him. We look to him. Whatever is noble. Whatever is, whatever is, whatever is, whatever is, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. We can move, but where do we start? Looking up. We, come up. we keep that anchor. And finally, as we prepare this morning for our communion, Look for the best in everything. And just think of the scripture I just read, isn't it? It is so easy to look for negatives in anyone, in everyone, in the country, at work, at business, in society, in everything. Many a times, the negatives outweigh the positive. But when we look up and we see what God wants us to see. Think on what is the right thing. It shapes us. It shapes us. And the treasure of Christ continues to build in our life. Amen? And that is so important. Look for the best in everything, not negatives. I will end with the scriptures that I want to read. But now... Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. you. I want hope, but I can find hope without God, isn't it? And that's not the best hope. It's something temporary. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Is there another scripture? No, okay. We have that. I want you to think on these. And think about, I know we've probably uh, done goals, finishing the year, but I think when we take hold of what God has for us, then anything is possible because He gives us the strength. Amen? He gives us the ability. Why? It begins in Him. It continues in Him. It ends with Him. Amen? It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. Will it take a few moments? And uh, as the cup comes, uh, just wait for one another and then we'll pray and we'll take this together. <laughs> but I want you in this next few moments, think about it. Lord, help me look up more because I want to look forward with hope. My life, all that I want, desire. God, if I look up, then I see what you want then I see the best that you have. And even if our hearts have wandered from the Lord, remember, we give up on ourselves. God never gives up on us. Never. Never. So you can look up to David with confidence with peace, with hope and say, God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, God, for all that you bring into my life. Oh, God, I've got such a treasure in Christ. Lord, I look forward because I look to you now. 
So begin to do that. Begin to do that right now. Say, God, give me the opportunities to speak, oh God. Lord, to be one who inspires others, encourages others, oh God. Not, not discourages, not, not starts crazy arguments and conversations, oh God. Lord, no God, give me that. Lord, let me be one who is loyal, oh God. Oh God, to you first, to others around me, oh God. Oh God, to walk in that way, God. Thank you, oh God. Lord, help me, oh God, with others that I will inspire, connect with one another, God. Thank you, Jesus. Give me strength and courage that I will not give up. That I will not give up, oh God, in all that I need to get done, oh God. Thank you, Father. And that I will look for the best. I will look for the positives, not the negatives. Lord, in our hands today is the symbol of of your love, your covenant, your sacrifice, your salvation, the amazing promise. In our hands, God, we hold the amazing symbol of hope that God, we will not perish. That we have this amazing future in you. And when we breathe our last on earth, we breathe the very air of heaven with you. On the night that you were betrayed, Lord, you took this. You took the bread. You broke it. You said, take, eat. It's an invitation. Take, eat. For those who are in Christ, we take what you have done for us. We receive your salvation. We receive your love. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your grace. We receive mercy. We receive from you all that you have done. It's not what we can do. It's what you have done, Lord Jesus. You said, take, eat my body broken for you. Lord, as that bread went around, it may not have been much in their minds what was happening. And then you passed the cup and you said, take, drink. Again, you invite to participate in your grace, in your salvation, in your love, in your mercy, in that fullness of life, in forgiveness. You said, drink the cup of my new covenant. You paid it all. You paid it all. Amazing love. Amazing love. How can it be? As we think of that, and as you and say, God, there's nothing that I can do to receive your love. Your love is amazing. Take, eat, let's take the bread. The cup. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you to do one thing today. Will you lift up a prayer, a conversation of thanksgiving to the Lord? Thanking Him for His amazing love in your life. His amazing grace in your life. His forgiveness, His peace, His mercy in your life. And say, God, I always want to look up to look forward, God. I always want to look up. I want to keep my eyes on you, Lord. I want to keep my eyes on you, Lord. That I would walk, oh God, in your ways, oh God. Come, let's just do that. Let's do that as we worship the Lord.
Yes, we can exalt him in our lives as we worship him. Father in heaven, help us to honor your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you lift up your hands? And now may the God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, by whose blood we have God's everlasting covenant also equip you with all that you need to do His will in every good work. God working in you what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and our. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Bless you. I've got just one announcement. One announcement. You know, my, my other point was show up. How many of us know that, you know, over the years, in, 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 in this last few years, Pastor Fusing, Gina and the family, especially Pastor Fusing and his wife, have always shown up. Yeah. Thank you for that underwhelming response. Yeah, they've always shown up. Along, along of course, with Sophia Siawan, they, they've been an amazing, amazing strength to me. And you know, some of you may know, you may not know, uh, I, I, over these few years, this, this, the physical battles in me just horrible energy levels, challenges, you know, um, it doesn't show, uh, but trust me. And, uh, and he's always been there for me. Uh, last minute, just jumping in. And, uh, you know, when, when I was away uh, this time in Bali, I went a bit earlier because my, I was just, my body was just whacked out. And uh, in that time of just a break and I was writing something and I thought about it, I said, hey, uh, you know, I I can push certain things for myself and do it and try to take a bit of a break. But I said, I think the church, we need to think of pastoral care and how also I want to see that afforded to Jin Ai and Fu Sing. And you notice I said Jin Ai first this time. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> It's a stress taking care of him <clears throat> and uh, and the children. Um, I 
think, not I think, I, I want to be, and I, and I raised it up in a small group. And I said, how many of us will feel okay? Those of us who would like to bless them, bless them. I want to send them for a holiday as a family. No winter holiday, no winter holiday. Yeah, well, I want to send them away for a holiday. Family, but the, the kids are happy. I don't have to come to church. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, a good four or five day break. It, it helps, isn't it? All of us, we think about that. And I know for years, we, we could never think of them, the 399, you know? And uh, so we're going to start doing that. The church will take some from what we have, whatever you want to bless but we want to send them for a good break so they all can take some time off. Uh, I will expect Terence and uh, Ellen to take care of their own wives and give them a good break. It's a stress taking care of you all itself, yeah. So they will take care of them. But uh, how many of us will say, hey, we appreciate you, you've done, you know, you, you serve us well. So I want to acknowledge that. And uh, yeah, because there are times in the morning I don't even want to wake up. Is just that way. So I want to acknowledge that and I want to say thank you. We want to do that. We want to keep building that part. We want to build together. Next year, we'll tell you the, we'll unfold the plans for next year. We've got 90, well, in that sense, 90 days left. But we want to end well. We want to take all of all that God has for us. We want to see lives touched. You know, Dignity has some crazy ideas for next year. Uh, and then that will be unfolded to you as well. Thank you so much. You've been an amazing bunch of people. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great week. Yeah, you can do better. Come on. All right.
Raise it like a banner. Raise it like a flag. 